The evolution of my art, um, it, it may be best to ask me that question when I'm dead or ask when I'm sufficiently old. It's, sometimes it's, I find it hard anyway to uh, understand exactly what's going on at any one moment. I need a bit more time to a distance from a piece or a series of works or a series of years to, to appreciate maybe or understand what's going on. Uh, but for quite some time, <clears throat> I've wanted to work as large as I could. Uh, it, uh, a six-foot canvas was a common dimension, um, and I've moved away from some of that, but this, the large canvases like this one uh, allow me to work and create an environment that's immersive, that, that I'm feel completely enthralled or connected to and, and, and enter into a conversation with the work itself. So this piece is very dense. Um, it's from a while ago and it's taken, it took several years to work on, not continuously obviously, but it's, it's a, what I would regard as primarily uh, direct painting. It involves some indirect painting too, but it's dense in its paint. Um, the shapes that are articulated are suggested. Uh, there's a softness between them. There's some ambiguity. It's not intended to be um, ambiguity as to be unclear, but there's a, a psychological and physical space that seems to exist that is not as distinct as to what the boundary is between one object in the next. And I think what we'll see in the next painting we show is a more distinct articulation of where something starts and stops. That doesn't mean there isn't a both and quality that objects within the space uh, possess or in my mind need to have for it to work, but um, but it's, it doesn't rely on the same kind of dense uh, somewhat sublime uh, quality of, of dark paints. So the, the, we have a mutual friend who said, you know, who's shown my work in the past, who said, your work is so dark. Uh, and I think what she was telling me was, it's not just dark in terms of color, it's dark in terms of theme. And <clears throat> um, I think that's an accurate description. Uh, we don't always get to pick and choose where we are emotionally and what we are, uh, and what we are willing to express or where we're willing to go. And so part of the evolution is um, simply attributable to the changes in outlook or current events or life at home. I mean, those stuff, that stuff becomes the substance of paintings. So uh, there are periods in which we are both either in a dark place or are willing to explore themes that are dense, um, maybe troubling, uh, involve a bit of the, in this case, I think this involves a bit of the sublime. And that's not always a place that I want to go, but it's a place I'm willing to go. And <clears throat> so some of the evolution of the work is natural 
the ebb and flow of life, and other times it's because you want to be in a certain where I want to be in a certain place and I choose to work in a dense manner. So this is just one of those pieces. So the evolution of the work, um, you know, evolution suggests um, a sequential, it, or we're often thought of as a sequential um, set of changes that one thing builds on top of the other. I'm not sure that that happens all the time, both in terms of uh, uh, because these works don't have studies that go th that precede them. These are more like automatic writing or exercises. So, <clears throat> but this one I do think. In, um, had you been here a week ago, I would not have shown you this because it was unresolved in my mind, the bottom third of the piece, but it is illustrative of what I think the some of the evolution is going on. Uh, the last penny we saw, the boundaries between things and what those things were were less distinct. Not that they didn't exist, not that those relationships and the underlying structure of the painting couldn't be discerned, but they were less obvious. Here, both the 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 color comp the color choices are much simpler, um, and the boundaries between things seem to be simpler, and yet how they combine with one another, or what the, what obviously they are or they aren't. That's more distinct, but how they compose or recompose themselves hierarchically, it, they vary depending upon how you're willing to look at the piece. So um, I think this is a good example of direct and indirect painting in terms of how paint is layered. It does, um, there's always an evolution of the paints that you use. I'm using more dry pigments now. I have a larger, wider range of colors that I can use. And there's a paint called, uh, color called um, Earth. It's from Spain. And it combined with indigo uh, yields a, a, a deep black that I just, you know, I was not using that same black. I, I didn't use a lot of black in the past. I would create blacks, but I didn't use a lot of straight up blacks. But that combination here, for example, gives me a depth that that, which is more of a lamp black, doesn't. And um, so, but those are just technical things that you learn that you don't necessarily anticipate when you construct a painting or make it. Uh, what you know or learn about how to mix paint or use it, uh, layer it, those kinds of things. But I do think this suggests a direction in which there's a, or greater articulation of what whatever the thing is without trying to describe it in terms that you can identify it with something from your it's with something in nature so how do I feel about the evolution of the work well I'm always hopeful that it's getting better <laughs> I can't always be predictive of where it's going to go because that's not the nature of how these things evolve I can set up certain uh, criteria for how I'm going to work or what I, whether it's the size or the material I'm going to use, but how it's going to evolve is something I have less control over. These are, um, I think of these paintings as, or part of, as a process, not a product, and they're evolutionary in and of themselves, and they're conversations. And if I'm going to have a conversation, it involves a two ways, <laughs> at least a two way conversation which means I need to do as much listening as I do speaking. And these things don't complete themselves. They often, rarely do I think they complete themselves. But they usually demand my attention. And so I evolve only to the degree in which I'm listening and only to the degree in which I understand the materials that I've chosen uh, in service of of the effort, and that's all I can say.